Lucy Pena, and I work for Indigenous Peoples of the Coastal Bend as an educational outreach. In 2016, I started planting a bunch of trees. I think I had about 35 trees in the backyard I was living in at the time. And I told Melissa, who is my best friend, I need somewhere to put these trees. We stepped up and contacted Parks and Rec uh, with the city and asked if we could adopt one of the spaces instead of it being sold off. Melissa did a lot of the legwork, pretty much all of the bureaucratic paperwork, um, by also linking up with For the Greater Good to adopt this space. To me, this this space is, a, in a way, us rec reclaiming space. We wanted this space not only to have trees growing, but to be a center or a hub of community. This was like a dream come true um, for some of us to take part in um, not only a community garden, but like a community park. A lot of us just kind of um, really understanding what we're working with as far as growing food in this soil and being so close to industry, um, knowing other organizations and people communities like the Hillcrest community, like the North and West Side communities of Corpus. The industrial expansion doesn't only affect the Karakwakadla or the indigenous community, it affects mostly predominantly black and brown communities. Um, they've suffered a lot of the brunt of um, environmental just injustices. Um, West Side communities, brown folk are experiencing a lot of that same pollution and exposure to pollutants. This is the, the cemetery, as you can see, um, preserved, I would say, because of the, the histor historical society. Um, they come in and they uh, do some things. Nice, nice cemetery. Just think about this. Um, right across the street is Coles High School, right? Uh, Simon, Simon Coles High School. You're in, right here in this census tract four is basically where uh, African Americans could only live in this particular area. And then in the uh, 60s, they allowed African Americans to live over in uh, Hillcrest. The history of African Americans are over here and, and you wouldn't even know that they were here the rate that they're building the bridges and, and uh, putting, trying to put a desalinization over here, trying to make this industrialized. Like I said, it just used to be children, parents, grandparents, Everyone used to just be at the park. And now it's empty, even on weekdays. Why? Because we don't have Hillcrest the way it was. We don't have the people here living still here. The home, two homes behind us, that was a, a home of a teacher. And uh, the court now owns it, owns that property. My name is Mona Lytle. I'm a resident of Hillcrest and I'm a member of HRA and I'm, I'm the treasurer of HRA. Look around. I feel as though everywhere we go, the air is contaminated. We've been fighting with the refineries forever for uh, emissions that they release in the air. And um, we try to protect the neighbors and let them know what's going on several people decided to move out because they said the soil was contaminated and they didn't want to raise their children in, in an area that was contaminated. Our concern with the soil is, and times of today when you go to the grocery store, prices are high. We want to be able to grow our own. But when we grow our own, we want to make sure that we're not putting any toxic, more toxic than we get from the air. At my house, I grow oranges, grapefruits, and stuff like that. I'm just really concerned about the soil. We need the scientists to come in and take samples of the ground and let us know exactly what's in them. And uh, if it can just harm us just by working in the yard. I was told that people were breaking out with rashes, hair loss, and stuff like that from just, you know, doing normal gardening. I would want someone to come in, a scientist to come in and let me know if there is something that can hurt me or hurt my grandchildren to come. I'm Kelly Sanks, and I am the Community Science Fellow with the Thriving Earth Exchange for this project. I am in charge of 
looking for and finding a community science for the scientist for the project. So I kind of just looked around at soil scientists in Texas and Matt was one of the ones that responded to me and we got in touch with him. The community met him. They, everyone really had a good feeling about him and really liked him and thought it was very sincere and would be really helpful. And he agreed to help us out with the project. My name is Matt C. Becker and I'm an assistant professor of environmental soil chemistry at Texas Tech University. So I got involved in soil sampling in this project through collaboration uh, with AGU. They reached out uh, to me after doing quite an extensive search and um, when they des described what they were looking for, I thought this would be a really important uh, really important event for me to participate in and so we decided I decided to to help uh, with the project uh, to to analyze the the soils for different heavy metals I put the site name zero to two inches and the date you know from the center center part we would just we want to get four four sub samples. So we take probably one large step out from here. And the way that you do um, use this soil, soil probe is you just uh, step down on, on it so that it goes all the way down. Give it a little twist and you can pull it up out of the soil. And we're going to do four of these, four of these sub samples. So we'll take this guy, this would be our top, top two inches here. And this would be our bottom eight inches that we'd want to grab. And then we continue like that basically throughout the whole field. And we ended up taking about a hundred samples over four different sites, separated out into top two inches, bottom six to eight inches. So we had about 200 samples. But essentially, these would be the samples that we would get uh, from each of the sites. Part of our action items is to take this information, put it into the report, share it with the community, and also, what actions do we need to take, and is there a risk? Growing local food is extremely important for community resiliency. You can't always trust those huge supply chains um, of food from a grocery store that's delivered from hundreds of miles away. My name is Jessica Pulitza and I'm the farm associate at Terra Madre Mini Farm. For me, it's really about community resiliency. We want to sustain all of the people here and keep them healthy and eating produce that they knew where it grew and that it is as nutritionally dense as possible. The soil sampling is super important for our farm because we've been growing here for many years now and we really wanted to know how we've been impacting the soil and how we could treat it better. That in addition to the industries that are just a few miles away, a lot of them burn petrochemicals um, and so we tested for PAHs to see if any of those deposited into the soil. You have the refineries a little bit away but they they still when when the air is is blowing and we we were concerned that that we'll get polluted as well to find out what how what the soil is all about and how the soil plays a role in in agriculture agriculture and it's a big it's it's a big deal regenerative agriculture is the is a the cash word these days you know and and the whole idea is of course starts with the soil ends with the soil as far as agriculture is concerned. Um, we're here at Keepers of the Garden. We are a community urban garden. Uh, we focus mainly on education. We also host workshops that have to do with uh, culinary arts, survival skills, um, planting 101, composting, the list goes on. So the partnership with the with uh, Matt was really cool. They came out and they taught us how to do the soil sampling. I have no science background whatsoever. I'm a classroom teacher by trade. Um, so it was really interesting to see the science in action. They were super easy to work with. Um, we were able to get most of our work done, you know, in a single morning. Um, and then being able to have that data and access to that data, we would never have been able to achieve any of that. We wouldn't have had anywhere to go for that information. So to have them be able to bring that in and provide that to us was really, really cool. And then, like I said, seeing the process was just super fun and geeky. So our results were mostly positive. They did have a few places that showed some, um, you know, some of the heavy metals that were a little bit more 
concerning. Um, luckily for us, most of those didn't occur within the space where we're growing anything edible. It tended to be more in the outside of the space beyond the fence where uh, we have more just uh, native plants, pollinator type plants. Um, but it did give us the awareness that like, we really need to pay attention. Um, not so much that we're worried about the, you know, things being absorbed into the foods, but more that we have our hands in that dirt and what's in that dirt that we could then pick up. Um, but, you know, with having that net doll, that knowledge, now we know we all, we really don't want kids in this area, or we really want to plant things here that are going to grow for many years that won't need a lot of care. Um, and so we've been able to kind of t tailor to that information. We're still working on the report. It's a lot of data to sift through. Um, the heavy metals were really low, um, all within a few dozen parts per thousand. With respect to the results, uh, we did heavy metal analysis at four different sites, and we found very encouraging results. Uh, for the most part, in most of the parks, heavy metals were at what we would call normal background concentrations. So overall, our results have been very encouraging, um, <clears throat> but we still have some details to work through. You know, we know that this space, even with its industrial history, even with being right next to the refineries down on Refinery Row, even with being an older part of Corpus, it, the earth has healed itself and we have made a place where things can grow and be productive and we can use the space for that. It helps to know that we have the resources to be able to know um, if we are in a danger zone. And so I feel like now that we have more of experience in um, using the technical terms and the tools that we need to like get results, we can start to help the community test their soils, test their yards, test their parks. This is the one to me that's had the most social and community impact. And it's been one of the most fulfilling projects uh, that I've ever worked on. It's been great to get all of this, but it's like kind of started a, uh, like a passion for wanting to know more about what's in our soil. I'm looking forward to all the organizations to come to us and tell us the truth. What's their plans? They have a plan to come to us, give us the respect that we deserve. The best thing that we can do as communities is to try and get the truth, is to try to dispel untruths. And science gives us the opportunity to really get to the root of issues, to get data, because the data isn't gonna lie to us.